This is the glitchiest offense in Madden 24. <laughs> Has explosive run plays. Run. Unstoppable glitch routes all over the field. And won't play touchdowns against every defense in the game. Break yourself, fool! So if you want to see what offense I'm using to get results like this, stick around after the intro. The For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The plays from today's video can once again be found on my Denver Broncos offense and Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebooks. If you guys want more help, you can always download these or any of my ebooks instantly by clicking links in the description or the top pin comment. In today's gameplay, we have a rematch of last year's Super Bowl against what might be the best team to use in Madden 24. But before I get into the video, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the channel and I appreciate all the support. The offense that I'm going to be using again today is my Gun Wing Flex Offset. And I'm going to show you guys one of the glitches won't play touchdowns you will see all year. But since I can't control what my opponent runs on defense, I already made a full practice mode style breakdown of this entire offense where I show everything this offense can do. So if you guys want to see more, I'll have links in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video. You're going to need a fast tight end here for this play to work. And the Eagles recently traded for such a tight end in Albert Akwe Boonham, a 6'5 tight end with 88 speed and 92 acceleration. That is perfect for this offense. But if your favorite team does doesn't have a tight end as fast. I used to use Grant Calcaterra at this spot and it still worked pretty well. My five plays in my audibles are going to be the stick knot vertical which beats both man and zone, the wheel drag post which is a one play touchdown against a lot of different defenses. I keep one slot for my run play and since there's a lot of good run plays in this formation I will usually change it throughout the game from the inside zone to the 0-1 trap and the power O as they all go in different directions. My last play is going to be the play that today's video is about and that is the PA double post as this is one of the glitchiest one play touchdowns in the game that your opponent will never see coming. The fifth play I call is the mesh spot as all these routes beat man and zone making it the perfect dink and dunk play. On the first play he comes out on a small defense so I switch to the inside zone on back to back plays to get the first in his territory before switching to the mesh spot and hitting the running back on a wheel route underneath before trying to hit the comeback route over the middle and if I would have thrown it right away I would have had the first. My opponent makes a great user play and now I'm pissed as he tries to hit the tight end on a check and release on the very first play. And we get the ball right back like nothing ever happened. My opponent has really been only running the same play all game so far in the cover three buzz, but I have the perfect play for that defense in the PA double post. The most important thing when it comes to setting up this play is that you need to be on the hash mark to the open side of the field as this spot of the field will alter the defense's pre-snap alignment. You can't really see it here because my opponent's cover three starts out with both safeties back, but I know from experience of running this play that this safety will drop down and cover short while this safety will drop back and cover the deep middle. And since I'm on the hash mark, the safety dropping back will always start cheating over to the two wide receiver side and that is because the game is programmed in a way where the coverage doesn't respect the tight end speed. You can see this in the cornerbacks pre-snap depths as well as the cornerbacks on the receiver side are both starting at an eight yard depth which is normal for cover three since they have to drop back and cover deep and don't want to let the receivers get behind them but if you look at the other side the cornerbacks start a few yards closer as they probably think they're much faster than the tight ends and can't possibly get beat deep by them. The only problem is that the route that the B tight end is running will draw the coverage to the outside cornerback and pull him further away, which means that all I have to do is put this tight end on a streak and he will split that giant gap between the cornerback and the safety. After that, all I have to do is put the two receivers on the other side on fade so they will hold the safety in that area. My last adjustment is to put the running back on a five yard out route for a check down just in case this doesn't work. My opponent starts to play using that area and even he didn't think the tight end could get open deep. Break yourself, fool! <laughs> as I didn't lead far enough away from the safety and he catches me inside the five. But I scored a drag a few plays later and it was because this play got me into this position making it responsible for my first score. <laughs> On defense my opponent starts by running the ball and my tackling is all over the place. What the fuck is that? As my opponent would have scored if I didn't get the biggest BS tackle ever. As he picks up the first to Travis Kelsey on the next play before going right back to him on the sideline to get into the red zone. So since he is spreading out my 3-4 defense with multiple wide receivers, I'm going to switch to my big nickel over G scheme on the next play. And he decides to test my user early. Oh, hell no. 
which is never a good idea. Back on offense, since he is shifting his line on every play, I decided to switch my run play and my audibles to the 0-1 trap, as this play can really go in either direction after the snap. On the next play, since I'm still in the hash mark and he is still in cover three since he doesn't run anything else so far, I'm going to set the exact same one play touchdown to the tight end. <laughs> The only thing that gives me pause is that he's clearly using the safety over the tight end, so if he sees it early, I will have to take the check down instead. And he does react, but if he's even, he's leaving. Break yourself, fool! He could go all the way! On defense, we are still setting the house, and my opponent is clearly struggling with the new speed of this defense. He sticks to it though, and eventually dinks and dunks his way down the field, fighting for every yard until he gets into the red zone, but, but things get tight down here as he just can't find the space to break the plane. Nope. And we force a critical fourth and three that he decides to go for. Back on offense, we just could take the air out of the ball and go to half with the lead, but I am recording this for a YouTube video, so of course I want to score again. But now he's backing everyone off, so I run the next two plays to get to fourth and inches. And with 24 seconds left and all my timeouts, I probably should have just punted it away. From here, our defense stands up though, no, sir, for you. as you can't score in a phone booth, and we shut him down on three straight plays as he decides to kick a field goal to break the shutout. He gets the ball to start of the second half, but this defense gets more interceptions than any defense I'm using right now, gotcha, bitch. as we get a huge interception and a return to start the next drive in field goal range already. I switch to the wheel post drag from here to work the cover three seam with a streak. You got most. From here, I probably should have done the old tush push because I hurry him up instead and he pushes me back on the next two plays before I have to decide to take a field goal to get my two touchdown lead back. From here, I just can't do anything stupid to give up a quick score. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Back on offense, he is now running cover four quarters, and my biggest issue from here on out is that I'm not really too familiar with my own cover four setups for this offense. Yeah. As he gets me into a three and out, and I have to punt it away, leaving the door wide open for a comeback. And he goes right back to the zig for another easy first, as I am subtly broadcasting my cover zero defense, and he is picking it apart. So I switch to zone on the next play, and almost get an interception before he figures it out and ties the game. God damn it! So I need to get his offense going again, only his cover four is now playing lights out. So on the next play, I go back to basics and just hit an out route for the first down. And we are going to take our time as he, I was clearly too dependent on that cover three one play touchdown. And I am now having trouble to adapt and find new plays for his cover four match. I switch to the stick knot vertical on the next play to work the corner route and get a big play right in front of his cornerback. Before switching my run play to the power O so I can run it right behind the tight ends for better blocking. And look who's back and cover three in the very next play. As you can see from this look why this play works so well. With a mile of separation between the safety and the cornerback that you only get if you're running this from a hash mark. Back on defense, we need to get a stop and we're making him earn every yard before Travis Kelsey makes an unreal jurdle with only Keely Ringo's weak ass to beat and a blocker to help him out. Help me! Help me! Damn it! To tie the game right back up. From here, I'm thinking field goal with no time left, so I start the drive by running the ball, but that cover four is still my kryptonite, as it is locking everything down. He gets me into a third and eight right away before I float the ball too much on the next play. Bruh. To throw an interception that could cost me the game in field goal territory. From here, I honestly just let him score. And you can tell that he wasn't even sure that was a good call as he rethinks it on the goal line before choosing to punch it in. Oh! Oh, good for you! As he could have guaranteed a victory by milking the clock and kicking a field goal as time expires. But at least I still have a shot with all my timeouts. From here I start the drive by running the ball as he's still in a very small defense. I probably should have gotten tackled for a huge loss in the next play, but this is DeAndre Swift we're talking about here, baby. League's second leading rusher and candidate for another big Madden ratings boost this week. He is running a lot of cover for regular, so on the next play I try to set up a one-play touchdown, but it's not there, so I take the check down instead, which is wide open for the first before I throw a potentially game-stealing interception. But the video is not over yet, as my opponent could have just taken the air out of the ball, but I push him back on the next two plays, and I guess his ego couldn't handle it, as he tries to throw in the next play and gets dropped, forcing him to punt away with only seconds left. I don't have any timeouts, so I have to work the sideline. The first attempt is no good, so I switch to the stick knot vertical on the next to get a completion inside the red zone. And with only one play left, I'm going to try it again, and you can see that this route goes right into the front court of the end zone. 
Fuck you, pal. You guys know I don't mind showing a loss as I've lost only three games all year and I've shown every single one of them to you guys. And even though I lost this game, it perfectly showcased one of the glitchiest plays in the game as I scored all three of my touchdowns because of it. But at the end of the day, I just couldn't adapt when we switched coverages as this offense is still new to me as well. So that's it, that's the video. If you guys enjoyed the content, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you want to see more from the offenses and defenses that I was using in today's gameplay, I'll have links from them popping up on screen. So just click links as I'm sure to help this game. And that's it. Until next time, thanks for watching, man. Mike's out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.